Well, new data from Auckland's largest real estate agent out today revealing that more than half of the property it sold in the last month went for over, get this, a million dollars. And Gibson NZ here on Property Editor is here. And these numbers are eye-watering. I thought this was the COVID economy. What is going on? Well, what is going on is everyone is buying property, Will. There's a uh, property market in Auckland going faster than the America's Cup boats. Or a lot of people that already had property are buying a lot more property and the people that couldn't afford the property aren't buying the Absolutely. properties. Absolutely. That's the real worry. What happens to first-time buyers yeah. and all this? So Barfoot and Thompson came out today and they said that at the start of the year, uh, the million-dollar properties accounted for about a third of the basket that they were selling every month. Right now it's about half. What really got me is we know the annual inflation in Auckland property is something like 16.8%, but they said that since June, prices have risen more than 10%. What is going on? Is, is, is it the story that we keep reading about uh, wealthy expats coming back to New Zealand because of the economy in the UK and that kind of thing. Where, why is this happening? So it's really interesting about the returnees. MB put out some new data in the last um, week or so that said we've had 75,000 people in New Zealand go through isolation. So it gives you an idea of the huge numbers. Yeah. Now there's a whole lot of things obviously playing in which we all know about like the low interest rates yeah. and the security. The pandemic, um, as we were just talking about a minute ago in the newsroom, is has really bred a sense of the need for security in people's okay. will. So the idea is you can touch property, that's land. And so as Peter Thompson at Barfoot said today, look, if people can afford it, if they can pay off the mortgage and if they feel secure in their jobs, they're going up. And to be honest, I know people have only owned a house for three years. They're already talking about buying an investment property. Yeah. I mean, that is a very unusual mindset, but, isn't it? But taking, winding back, though, to 2017, the government promised they were going to deal with this kind of stuff, right? Why haven't they and what are they going to do about it? <laughs> oh, yeah, Kiwi Bill. Well, come on. <laughs> glorious institution that one was. Yeah, um, well, that's a really good question. Um, the resolution side of it is the really difficult part. Now, what a lot of people are beginning to talk about at the moment is extending the Bright Line test. So the Bright Line is where if you, at the moment, buy a property that's not your own home and you sell it within five years, you pay your income tax rate. On the extra money that you sell On the it profit for. that you made, right? Which on is a capital difference. gains tax, right? Well, it effectively But not if is. you want to hear from this government, because obviously we had a government that said that they wouldn't institute a capital gains tax. So what are they going to do? That already exists. They want to extend it. So the idea here is that it could be extended from five years to 10 years. So that would capture all those investors who are considering at the moment buying and then flicking that property and buying more or whatever they've got planned, mm -hmm. and then they'd get taxed more heavily. Um, look, my view is this real property boom in New Zealand came about originally through 9-11, believe it okay. or not. I can trace it back to about 01, mm -hmm. when a whole lot of Kiwis returned from overseas saying it's not safe. China free trade agreement Europe. at that time as well though, right, which increased access to property from overseas investors also. The Chinese I really saw coming in, well, in about 2015, and okay. it's really hard to prove because there was yeah. no data, yeah. we were not measuring it, but yeah. just because I'm in touch with the agents and the people who are buying and selling, mm -hmm. that's when everyone started squealing to me. Mm -hmm. We've got busloads of um, Chinese coming in at the airport, cruising around Epsom and buying, buying properties, buy but even property. worse, we've got them on the phone, buying from Slide Beijing, insane. Shanghai, whatever. We can't prove it, we didn't measure it, we didn't know about it, I'm just going by the anecdotal evidence. But what everyone's beginning to talk about at the moment is extending the bright line test. And who knows if it'll go from five to seven years, or eight or 10 years, but the idea, you know, um, with um, like Grant Robertson writing to Adrian Orr, talking about the fact that there has to be some movement the here. Bank yeah, so there seems to be an alliance between the finance minister and the governor of the Reserve Bank. But again, what I'd say to you is, look, who ever saw COVID doing this to yeah. housing? Well, right? well, well, that was what I was going to say, right? They can do as much as they want, and this is an interventionist government, and they like to do that, right? But the stats internationally, this is not just a New Zealand mm. thing, mm. this is an international thing, yeah. is that wages during the COVID economy have gone down. People have made less money in the workplace and as a result, people are putting more money oh. into fixed assets like property. The stock market is also at record highs mm. right around the world mm. and including in New Zealand. So ultimately, when an investor looks at where they will get money from, the interest rates are so low, they won't put that money into the bank on a term deposit, they don't earn anything on it. Mm -hmm. So where are they going to go? They're going to put it into property. And extending the Bright Line test 
It seems really to me it? that's not going to do anything mm, for mm, first home mm, buyers, right? Mm, like mm. the government is the, the, they've been selling us this the yarn um, the whole time that they want to get people in into that first home. It's not going to work, right? If you don't have yeah. properties to sell them, yeah. like the real estate agents say, there's yeah. not enough properties out there to sell. It doesn't matter what yeah. you do yeah. when it will when this market will keep going. So that, that's entirely right. Therefore, the answer is surely to increase the supply of property okay. so that you um, you change that supply demand curve somewhat. Now, yeah. the only problem with that is it has to occur so rapidly. And like actually, Phil Twyford, to his credit, had a formula that seemed on paper to work. But of course, if it had worked, all the developers would have yeah. done it a long time ago because it would have made so much years, money. Though, to build those houses at the rate yeah. that they promised by like 2025, yeah. right? So yeah. if you can't build houses and people want to put their money into houses, is there anything the government can do? <laughs> the million dollar question, Will. Yeah. Well, we heard from the Prime Minister. The reason I ask this is because we heard from the Prime Minister as well, right? When we asked her very directly, mm. what do you want to happen with house prices? Mm. Do you want them to go down or do you want them to go up? And it's very hard politically to pick a team on that side, right? Because you're betting against the people that vote for you. Yeah, the homeowners exactly. want the prices to yeah, go up. Yeah. The people who want to get in the market want it to go down. Yeah. How are they going to solve this problem. And that's exactly what's been happening and with Parliament opening with ACT and National attacking Labour, yeah. saying what are you going to do, calling yeah. them out on it, right? Yeah. My view, of course, is... Are they going to break the promise that there will be no extension capital of a gains, capital gains tax? Because it tax. seems like that's all they can do, right? Do you think they're going to break the promise? What have you heard? I've heard that it's more likely that the bright line test will be extended out That's to perhaps the promise, a decade. Right? That's that, breaking the promise. That well, you could say because they said the income tax increase to thirty nine percent was mm. the new taxes mm. that they were coming. The mm. prime minister said in all the debates in the lead up to the election that she wasn't going to do a capital gains. No, tax. it was actually Grant Robertson called out by Heather Duplessy Allen on her drive time show where she was interviewing him and saying, "What plans do you have for tax?" And he said, yeah. "My singular plan." is to increase the top tax bracket, mm -hmm. right? Now, um, you, you could say that an extension to the bright line test is within the realm of possibility, given the fact that the market has taken off more than anyone would have thought, right? Yeah. So you go back to even just March this year, yeah. the economists picking a drop of six to nine percent. So the Prime Minister makes the things change argument because we can't keep this going the way it is. Well, maybe. Who knows? You know, that's predicting the future. Well, all I can say is that the idea of the bright line test, and as you say, how effective is that? The people who support it say, well, if it's ineffective, it doesn't really matter then, does it? They could okay. introduce it. There's a lot no of people angry about it. it, eh? They don't want it. There's a lot of people angry about it. So presumably there's a reason that they are upset about it. But ultimately people need homes and they want to be inside homes. And if there aren't enough and of them, people will pay money more. Absolutely. And that's the, the crux of the matter, isn't it? It's a social issue as well as an economic issue. And it's also a financial stability issue, isn't it? Because we know that this type of activity is not really healthy for an economy in the long term. Same thing as you say, going on in other economies around the world and even trying to build the houses at the moment. I've just been looking at stories about the shortage of, of uh, wood, the shortage of appliances, yeah. trying to get things in from overseas. So we've got other levers kind of being moved at the moment that are unhelpful. Let's hope they sort of Anne Gibson or it looks like I'm coming to live with you. Breaking news throughout the day at nzheraldcoz She lives in Devonport. It's chic. Bye for now. <laughs>